to my next lesson in my new series, Simple Soloing Over Standards. We're taking a look at the tune Summertime. If you'd like to follow along, I'll be updating a playlist in the description below. Just follow the link. And if you would like to get the music that accompanies this lesson series, please check out the other link in the description below. It will connect you to my website where you can get all the music in PDF format in tab and standard notation with the correct fingerings written now. So in the previous lesson, I covered the basic changes to summertime and tried to simplify it for us. In this lesson, I'm going to be taking a look at the A minor and D minor triads and how we can begin to embellish them and combine them with the blues. If you're following along on the PDF, this is going to be the first part and it's going to be split in half as we're just paying attention to the first two chords of the changes. And the next lesson will cover the E and A7 chord. So with that, let's take a look at our A minor chord. Our A minor uh, is here on the uh, fifth and seventh frets. We have A on our fourth string, that's going to be on the seventh fret. We have C on our third string, that's going to be the fifth fret. E on our second string, that's going to be on the fifth. And then A on our first string, and that's going to be on the fifth. So that's the one, three, five, and one. And this is related to just a basic block A minor chord or your kind of uh, jazz rhythm guitar shell voicing, a rhythm guitar voicing for your A minor chord. Okay, so that's going to be our basic A minor. And then the D minor is going to be like this. So we have A on the seventh fret, that's our fifth. We have D on the seventh fret, that's our first. F on the sixth fret, that's our third. And then A on the fifth fret, that's our fifth. So it's right within that A minor chord grip. So our D minor, and that's just derived from basic D minor chord right here. Or if we were using the inversion that I showed in the previous lesson, you have a D minor right here. So the basic way of beginning to use these triads to solo is to incorporate approach notes. All an approach note is, is going one below or one above the triad or the specific note in the triad that we're targeting. So if we're playing A, C, E, and A, the approach to A would be G sharp to A. One below, then right back into it. From C, it would be B to C. From E, it would be E flat to E. From A, it would be G sharp to A. So you get four extra notes. And the way to think about this is just tension resolution, okay? And there's something that's happening underneath that, but we'll talk about that when we cover the E chord in our next lesson. So we have G sharp A, B, C, E flat, E, and then G sharp and A again. And a note on fingering, what I like to do is use my second and third, as this, uh, my third is what is in the root or the base, right, for the A minor triad like this. And then I like to use first and second fingers on the fourth and fifth frets. And then when I come up into the final note, I like to slide up so my hand is back in position. So all together I get this. And this just keeps things even for me. And when I go backwards, same thing just with the third finger okay so that's our a minor so to begin just to getting kind of the, the feel for this and the sound for it just mess around playing out of time or in time uh, don't hold yourself to the changes quite yet but just over an a minor chord and maybe go back and forth between playing the a minor chord so you can hear how it sounds against the triad then with the approach notes so I might just first start experimenting doing things like this getting a good feel for it. A lot of quarter notes, right? Make it swingy. All right, so 
just kind of getting used to your fingers, how you want to finger it, right? Those are, that's just my way of doing it. I find it it's works um, and it's economic to kind of move around faster, but find your own way too if that works better. So that's what I would do for the A minor, just kind of getting it under my fingers. After I just feel comfortable kind of playing some quarter notes around with it, I might put, try and put it a little faster in time. So I might go a one, two, three, four. so on. Then I would start trying to make eighth note lines. So it, just going up and down, right, the approach notes is a great way to start this. So I might go a one, two, three, four. Down. Right, and then throw in some quarter notes. just getting used to those two fingers moving up and down. So that's what I would do for the A minor chord. Now when I get to my D minor, I'm gonna put it through the same paces. So with the D minor, I've got my fifth, first, third, and fifth. So with the A, I've got an A flat or G sharp. With the D, I have a C sharp. With the F, I have an E. And with the A, I've got an A flat or G sharp. So I'm just going to do the same thing. Right? And begin just to incorporate my eighth notes right off the bat. When I get comfortable with that for the D minor, I'm going to now start going back and forth between A minor and D minor. And again, not thinking of the changes, I'm just thinking of my own time and when I feel comfortable to make the change. A good practice is to call it out to yourself. Force yourself to make the change, but take your time in doing so. So, with the A minor, Back to the A minor. To D minor. Back to the A minor. So you can see, just playing that kind of game with yourself is a really good practice just to navigate and be able to command where you want to go and switch in between the chords. And it's also a great way of seeing the relationship between where the chords are on the fretboard. So if you call out to yourself, switch real quick, you can try and find the closest note that outlines the next chord. From there, you want to put it in time and just start working on that slowly. So if you feel comfortable, a good way of doing that is adding in the chords as you make the changes so that you can uh, have a good backing to what you're playing. If you don't feel quite comfortable with that, just slow it down and count it out. 
So as a quick reminder, you know, for summertime, the basic changes that we're working with for the A minor and D minor chords are our first line, our first four bars is going to be an A minor, and then we have two bars of D minor right after it, just kind of like a blues. So to play that, one, two, three. <laughs> so on and so forth. But just getting that down for now and being able to make that change in time is a really important uh, thing to do before we uh, proceed to the E chord. So let's try it again. A one, two, three. Into the E there. So. I was now incorporating some of those basic uh, chords that we covered in the last lesson just to kind of anchor me to where I am in the changes, okay? From there, the last thing you can do is just incorporate some blues into this. And this is a great way to just kind of vary the sound of what you're doing. So it just doesn't sound like you're doing only approach notes the entire time. So you might have something like this. So begin to work slowly up by just playing out of time, getting used to the triads, and then getting that sound in your ear. When you can become more comfortable, start calling out the switch to yourself between A minor and D minor. And from there, start incorporating it into the actual changes. So that's the first line and then the first half of the second line. And that again is four bars of A minor, two bars of D minor. And then the next lesson will cover the E7, and then a, a nice kind of sneaky way to incorporate an A7 chord that pulls us into the D minor a little more. Do that, check out the PDF of all the music. It covers again all the triads and then all the approach notes. Not all the examples are tabbed out, but again, the triads and the approach notes if you want those on paper to see, and it will continue to do that with the other topics we get into in this lesson series. See you in the next lesson.